I was talking to a colleague who told me that one of her clients decided to delay her divorce because she wanted the tax deduction for the children. She didn't realize that alimony is taxable, so cutting off the divorce ended up costing her in the end. With tax season just around the corner, this conversation prompted me to write about what you should consider when filing your income tax returns if you are separated or divorced. There are some things to consider. Filing status, tax deductions for children, and alimony and child support. First, filing status. Your filing status is used to determine your filing requirements, standard deduction, eligibility for certain credits, and your correct tax. You want to choose the one that results in the lowest amount of tax. In general, the tax rates get higher in this order, starting with the most advantageous. Married filing jointly, single head of household, single married filing separately. But there are things to consider carefully before you decide which way to go. Filing jointly. As far as the IRS is concerned, if you are separated but still legally married as of December 31st of the year in which you are filing, you are considered married and can file a joint return with your spouse. Is this a good idea? Keep in mind that if you file jointly, you could be liable for any problems related to the return. I have heard from countless women who said they didn't know that they were exposed to the liability of the joint return they signed. It is never a good idea to sign without fully understanding all of the information claimed. If you aren't sure of the information, hire an independent accountant and have them review any tax returns before you sign them. Worst case, if you find you have signed a return that creates a liability, you can try to invoke the innocent spouse principle that allows a spouse to escape liability if they can prove their case. I don't suggest this as a plan, but it may help if you find yourself in that position. Single. Since your filing status depends on your marital status as of December 31st, if you were divorced by that date, you would file as single taxpayer regardless of whether or not you and your spouse live together during any part of the year. If you are still married on December 31st and if you and your spouse live together and are not legally separated, you must file either married filing jointly or separate returns. Married filing separately is usually the least cost-effective way to file taxes. Single head of household. You may qualify for head of household if you meet the following conditions. You were in married or considered in married. On December 31st, you paid more than half of the household costs for the year. You have a child or other qualifying person living with you for more than half the year. Second tax deductions for children most divorcing couples believe that they are entitled to take the exemptions for the children. I have seen divorces delayed due to people thinking they will lose the exemption if they divorce. Often, when there are multiple children, spouses agree to split the exemptions. While the IRS assumes that the spouse who has custody of the children is entitled to the exemption, in fact the spouses are allowed to trade them back and forth freely using IRS Form 8332. Honestly, the spouse with the higher income should tax the deduction, otherwise they are missing a chance to maximize tax savings. I know this idea makes the other spouse feel like they are missing out on a tax savings, so I suggest consulting with an expert on tax in divorce who can calculate the value of the exemption S to each spouse. The one who can make better use of the exemption S should take all of them and if appropriate, compensate the other spouse. As my mom always says, pick your battle and this would not be the one that I would advise you to pick. Third, alimony and child support. It is important to understand the following. Child support is not a deduction for the paying parent, nor taxable income to the receiving parent. Alimony is, when completing your lifestyle analysis, you should take into account as an expense the taxes that will be due on alimony and budget to pay that expense quarterly. Otherwise, April 15th will come and you will be upset with the tax bill that may be handed to you. Believe me, I have clients who are prepared and still get upset. It is important to consider taxes when negotiating alimony, when possible with 
it'd be better to take a larger marital asset distribution in lieu of alimony. Short answer yes. Taxes are not simple, and as in all complicated issues, don't hesitate to consult an attorney, a certified divorce financial analyst, or a financial advisor to help you decide what's best for your situation.